All right, all right. Let's create our character. Ooh, it's definitely gonna be Torin. Druid used to be my first character. I could make him like that. Mm, something menacing to show people that I mean business. Uh, I think this is what was cool back then. And a lot of braids. More braids. Yes. I think this is the first thing that I had. Of course it's taken. Too much RP for it to not be taken. And uh, let's hop right in mm. oh that fast loading screen right we all know this just gonna skip okay I I don't want any tips let's uh, check our settings really quick uh, instant quest X I remember this I want to see buff I, I even remember, like, I even remember all of the settings that I used to make from the menu. Max camera distance, yeah, we want that. Uh, I remember everything, man. Show a name? No. NPC names? Always this NPC names in the game world. Nah, kind of takes away from the... Emer oh, this is what I had, right. I'm playing a druid, so maybe energy gains, although I don't know if I'm gonna end up getting the cat form, I think that's 20. Target of target, right. Uh, action bars, I'm gonna keep that away from now, I don't think it's gonna be so, but there, there was one other thing. Uh, auto loot thing, right? There was, was there, a, there was, there used to be an auto loot option. Uh, simple chat remove action bars. No, was it in uh, No, I don't remember. Maybe it wasn't in this game version. Okay, whatever. Story time. So my warcraft history how i got into warcraft how i became a blizzard fanboy and indeed it started with with warcraft oh look we have a contender for the adventure it's in a fight and get a quest and while we play i'm just gonna lower the music really quick sound music something like that all right uh any other quests no Ooh. So how I started with everything, everything started with Warcraft 2, so like, I was playing video games for a very long time. I don't even know what I have to do. Oh, Striders, okay, I gotta kill these. I was playing video games for a very long time. Uh, ever since I was, kid, I was a kid, I think we had uh, an MS-DOS computer that used to play video games, like even before Windows. Ooh. I'm out of mana. Woohoo! Look at that. And uh, the first time that I think I've played an actual good game, I was at a relative's and they had a computer and of course I, I wouldn't socialize with anybody and just I just played a computer and that was uh, that was nice. And they had this weird game called Warcraft 2. But I didn't have anything, I didn't have like Doom or uh, Wolfenstein or whatever was cool back then, back in the early uh, 90s, mm, early 2000s I think actually, late 90s, uh, early 20s. And uh, alright, this Warcraft game, what is it all about too? I get to play with like grunts and footmen and stuff, and I get to control them, tell them what, where to go, what to hit, and that's pretty cool right? And then I played more Warcraft, and I got to a point, uh, I think I was playing the human campaign when it actually hit me. Uh, I got into one of the campaign maps, I think where it first lets you uh, build your uh, town hall to castle. And I walked into the base, and I saw the castle there, right in the middle of the base. And I was like, wow, this is my castle. And I had like walls surrounding my starting zone, I had farms, I had... I think I was, I think it was the mission with knights, 
when you first uh, unlock knights or paladins, I don't remember. And it felt amazing. I always had this uh, this love for, for medieval fantasy, for knights and uh, castles and wizards and dragons and stuff like that. And that's when, that's when it hit me. Wow, this is all mine. I get to build a base, I get to build an army, and I get to like hit things and kill things. So that was that was really cool for me. It it was it was an experience like the first RTS experience. It was like nothing that I have ever played before. I couldn't imagine controlling like a big army. So that was nice. And then I played more, of course, and uh, I ended up playing the Horde campaign as well. And that's when I fell even more in love with the game. I I I liked the idea of uh, of making an army of grunts, sheer brute force. Um, Winning my battles against uh, the knights and the walls and the castles and everything, including all that defensive power and everything like that. So that was that was really cool. And uh, yeah, that's when I that's when I fell in love with uh, with RTS and uh, Warcraft in general. And then um, I, I think I was still at my relative's place, and their computer broke, but they had like a, a backup hard drive with another game there. And it, was, it looked very much like Warcraft 2, but it was weird, it was in space and you had to shoot dogs with machine guns and I think you know I'm talking about Starcraft. And it was a little bit weird, I thought it was like this cheap Warcraft lookalike, like why, why would anybody make a copy of another game instead of making a new game, that's what I thought. And uh, I think I have to leave a quiz here. Oh yeah, this is the trainer. Oh man, right, class trainers. Check this out. And I think I can even train. Oh, I don't have, I don't have money. Let's uh, let's see if we can sell some stuff and learn uh, Mark of the Wilds. Buff our little party member. Plus we have a quest here. Is this Bane? Oh no, Chief Hawkwind. Right, so StarCraft, it felt really weird, I felt like I was like betraying my love for Warcraft, what is this this cheap knockout, why do, do, do people have guns, why is it in space, what's with the uh, the little dogs that, that were showing up everywhere, uh, those were zerglings obviously, and uh, I actually had a similar love for uh, sci-fi action when i was a little kid i actually wanted to uh, to become an astronomer to, like study the stars and it fascinated me stars planets uh anything that happened I, I, I used to read like a lot of books about it probably like mediocre knowledge type books for normal people but it felt really cool back then i knew how stars were born how galaxy works and and, and stuff like that but yeah i eventually f fell in love with uh, with starcraft as well it was really cool and years passed, I kept playing Warcraft 2, and um, I always had a weaker PC than everybody else, than my friends. My my uh, my parents weren't all that rich, we mainly had a PC because my mom, my mom had to work... Uh, had to work as a teacher, she had to, to make the, like, projects, schedules, uh, she wrote some books, and that's why normally we had a PC for war purposes, but of course we played on it a lot. And when Warcraft 3 came out, my PC actually could not run the could not run the game. And I was really jealous. I was like looking at all my friends playing Warcraft 3. And I was stuck with Warcraft 2 and StarCraft. Well mostly StarCraft at this point. And um, I was I was really, really jealous. And then after a couple of years, of course, close to WoW's release. Uh, my parents actually bought a, a better PC that could run Warcraft 3 and when I first went in, man, that was so cool, everything was 3D, uh, the action was so much cooler, the story, man, I cannot even begin to tell you how I felt when uh, when I played the human campaign with Arthas, I thought Arthas was so cool, I felt a little bit conflicted when uh, we got to the Stratholme mission, remember that, when, uh, when Arthas decides to purge the, uh, the city? Ooh, I got a battle shout. And I was like, yeah, I, I know what you mean, man, but there's still like innocent people. Are we really gonna kill them? But you know, I was behind Arthas, right? He was the paladin, he knew, he knew his stuff. He knew what was what he was saying. Um Yeah, and then at the end of the campaign he turned into the undead and, and killed his father. That was like the I think it was 
the first um, story driven content that I played that had a uh, turnaround is like the good guy is not is not the good guy the good guy turns evil like not everything is black and white they're like stories have shades of gray that was the first time that I encountered something like that it was really new to me and it was shocking it was dramatic and I felt really nice wow man I killed my own dad what's what's up with that that's that's that feels so wrong right looks like this warrior is uh is eager for some stuff and, and yeah so naturally I fell in love with the story in Warcraft uh, Warcraft 3 it was really nice and of course I loved the Grom and Thrall story how Grom sacrificed himself to free the orcs that was super cool and uh, that was my history right I never played the, the RTS's in a multiplayer fashion and uh, I just played for fun I just played the stories the campaigns over and over again I knew like I think at one point I even knew the the voice lines by heart, right? I could I could tell you exactly what a character was about to say, the tone of voice, uh, and everything, right? And uh, at the time, I think uh, I started to realize that these games were made by the same company. Uh, I I was playing Diablo 2 as well. I was like Blizzard, Blizzard, man, these guys are making all the cool games: Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo. Man, these are like the coolest game out there. And this one company. It's making all of them. How cool is that, right? So I, I uh, naturally the internet came about. I think I was, I don't know, somewhere around like 6th, 7th grade, something like that. And I think WoW was announced. Or I think WoW came out. I don't I don't remember exactly. I think it was around some somewhere in 2003 to 2005, something like that. So I started reading about it. Man, you mean... I, I was reading on the website and I was like, are you telling me that I get to play one of the grunts that I'm controlling in the game. I get to be one of the shamans. I get to be thrall or like play with like a farseer type hero. Uh, let's see. I am done with uh, items. Still need for quest. Where's my chat bubbles? Where are my chat bubbles? Interface options. Show name, show party background, side zone objectives tracker, alterations in quest, head bob, show tutorials, show details, advanced options. Uh, show disposable bob, show castable bob. Simple chats. Uh, show party chat bubble, there we go, that's the one. Not done it, okay bore one so where was i right so i was reading up on uh, on wow and uh it felt really cool like this game like i had a shitty pc that could barely run warcraft 3 at like medium quality or stuff and i was like man i so wish i can play this game but my computer definitely won't be able to run this i was reading up everything on the website i was devouring the information all of the stuff about each class, how you how you can be a hunter and tame crocodiles. Like, wow, I get to have my own crocodile pet. How cool is that, right? And then um, I, I was, uh, I think it was at the end of my eighth grade. I uh, uh, Just before I graduated, my grandpa died. And um, at, at his funeral, like a lot of relatives came all over the country. Uh, we have a big family here in Eastern Europe and I got a, I got I got to meet like some of my cousins and uh, and stuff right and uh, one of one of my cousins I call him cousin but I think he was my mom's cousin and he was two years older than me um, Eastern Europeans are weird so uh, don't 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 ask it's fine and uh, I told him, right, we started talking, we realized that we both uh, we both have a passion for games. And I said, like, yeah, man, like, I, I, I play Warcraft 3. Do you know this, this cool game, World of Warcraft? I was like, oh, yeah, man, totally, I'm playing it. It was like, you're playing the game? I was so jealous. And we started talking, so how is it? How? And he told me, told me stuff, like, what is he doing? He had a role or whatever. He played with a few friends. And he kept telling me how he played the game. I was like, oh, man, I so want to play it, right? And he said, well, what, what computer do you have? It's like, um, I told him like what computer I had at the time, what specs I had, what processor and video card and stuff. And he said, dude, you could, you could totally play the game. It's like, what? 
I was shocked. What do you What do you mean? What What do you mean? I can I can totally play the game. Uh, let's see what do we have. Chief Hawker wants you to search for his. Oh, the mom and the battle boards, right? She's like, um, what do you mean you can I can play the game? She's like, yeah, man, you can totally do it. Like the uh, the minimum specs that the game had uh, shown on the website, because that's how I could tell that I cannot play the game. Were uh, were basically. You could probably ignore them because uh, Vanilla WoW was so cool optimized. You can probably play it on a potato. You can m definitely play it on a, on a mobile phone today with like controls or properly added to the game. And I was excited. I was like so excited, man. I went home that day and uh, I started downloading the client. And I even remember, I think that time of year we were renovating the kitchen. Uh, I think we actually we were renovating the entire apartment. My parents we were putting like um, hardwood floor and stuff like that down, and the whole the whole house was a mess. Like there were like luggage and furniture all over the place. You couldn't even sleep, right? So we were normally supposed to sleep at a neighbor uh, while the uh, the renovations were going. But I said, Nah, mom, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here. I'm gonna watch some movies on a computer, whatever. Uh, so I was just sat alone at night, right? And I started downloading the client. And I'm not gonna tell you that back in 2004, 2005. Um, the internet wasn't as good as today. I don't know if you guys, most most of you probably already had uh, dial-up uh, internet at the time. You remember that shit? Fucking hell, modems. Man, the generation today won't ever know how the internet was at the time. And uh, I started downloading, and of course, it took like forever, right? And before I go more into this, I just I just need to uh, tell you guys a couple of things, right? Um, Romania is a country in the- what the fuck? Look at that shit. I, th I don't think we're supposed to see that. I think only shamans are supposed to see that. I think this is a bug. So, um, Romania is a little bit backwards when it comes to certain mentalities and culture. Uh, cultural things, like the gaming culture. It's like, we don't- we probably have one of the best internets in the world. That's still cool and I'm still proud that I'm- I'm, I'm a Romanian and I have probably one of the best internet connections in the world But my parents were like not into gaming at all. They considered gaming to be like a waste of time uh, They didn't agree me spending any time on gaming, so I had a hard time playing at all So when I found out about WoW I knew that I couldn't play as much as I wanted to because uh, my my folks won't would not ever let me play as much and I think I was about 14 or 15 at the time. I was just finishing up uh, finishing up junior high, going into uh, high school. So I had to like go around, right, what, what what my parents were doing. And I was like, yeah, mom, I'm, I'm just gonna stay home and watch the movies. And in secret, I started downloading WoW and it took like forever. It took like two days or something like that. I got super excited, like I was building my my hype my expectations watching that download bar grow higher and higher and it finally finished downloading um at the time uh i of course because my parents weren't into gaming i couldn't play on uh on the official service right i had to play on private service this is how i played wow uh, at the beginning uh, it was private service for me my parents wouldn't ever buy me the game not to mention pay monthly for sub and I couldn't ask my parents for money, there was no such thing. Like, allowance barely happened before we got, me and my sister got to high school. There's no such thing as allowance. You get lunch, you go to school, you eat, you come back. Uh, there was no going out with friends, there was nothing like that at the time. At least for me anyway, I was a little bit more socially awkward. So I didn't really go out, like, to drinks or in the city. Plus I was, like, super young at the time, at when my, my age, my, the, the, the kids my age at the time, we weren't going to movies or going out, we were just playing outside, like uh, playing football or as you uh, Americans like to call it, soccer, but you hit the ball with the foot, so I'm gonna call it football. Uh, we played outside, we played all sorts of things outside, nobody had any money or anything like that, right? So it was very unusual for parents to buy games for kids, not to mention to pay them, pay a subscription for a game monthly. If I ever told my my dad that he would he would disown me, he would take away the PC and said, "Oh, you you need to read a lot more books or some shit like that," right? So that that was that was how I played WoW at the time. So there was no 
chance for me to play on the on the official um, on the official server. So I had to play on a private server, and I was playing, of course, on the server with my cousin, the one that told me that I could play the game, and it was really cool. Uh, I got to make my first character was a Tauren Druid, because Taurens were cool, and uh, I named him Bloodhoof because I was super into RP. I was a turbo nerd. Oh, blood hoof. Oh, I have a hoof, but I'm not like your ordinary torrent that looks for peace. I have battle scars and blood on my hoof. I'm blood hoof. That was me, right? So I was like right here in Mulgar. Oh, looks like uh, she's waiting for me there. Still have boars to kill though. Okay, let's let's just go. Whatever, let's just go. Let's just go here. And uh, I, it took me. I think it took me like. Four Four hours or something like this just in this zone when I first logged into the game and I saw Molgor and I saw this whole starting zone the plains the mountain ranges oh man it was it was I, I think a lot of people can relate to this the first time that they played an MMO they log in with a character that they can control and they see that there's an actual world around them it was amazing like I explored the shit out of that world I don't need to kill myself and uh, it took me like around, I remember, it was a good, a good, uh, a good amount of hours. I'm, I'm saying four, but I think it took me a long time for me to get here. And when I got here, like I passed that little ridge over there and got to where all of these guys are. I was like, wow, this is like a totally new zone. Look at these guys. Thorns and everything and battle. Ooh, I gotta kill her. Battle pigs and everything. Look at that. Oh, this is so cool, right? And... Because I was playing on a private server, there were, there were not a, as many players around. So when I started my character, there was no other players in the starting zone. There were no other players. So all I had were the NPCs and the quests, right? So I kind of knew that this was an MMO, but I came from uh, from a world of Diablo 2, right? Where you just... the, uh, the only other hu uh, human characters that, that you could interact with were the NPCs that were giving you quests and stuff. But I got here, right? Uh, in a zone, all, for, all with torrents, I saw an orc here. And he was killing the boars, and I was like, wow, what's this orc doing here? Orcs are supposed to be like in a different land, in Durotar, right? So I was confused, and I, and I actually typed him, so it's just stuff like this. Are you a real, real player? Shit like this, right? You have to at least... Oh, right, they're restricting my talk. <laughs> no, private servers, what are you doing? So I, I, I typed to him, right? I was like, are you a real player? I was like, so, so excited. I was like, this, this, is, this guy is like, he's not walking with a pattern. He's not moving with a strict pattern. So he cannot be a, uh, an AI, right? An NPC. He has to be a real player. And he said, yeah. Well, I think he said, I think so. Because uh, he probably realized I'm an idiot. And then we started killing stuff together, right? I was healing him. He was a war warrior. He was killing boars. We're killing everything here. It was super, super cool. That was my first MMO encounter, my first encounter with another playable character, player-controlled character. It was super, super cool. And uh, that's that's basically how I started playing WoW. And then, of course, I continued playing on the private servers. I eventually ended up uh, get, get, getting friends in into the game. I played both Horde and Alliance. I played a lot of characters. I didn't max for a very long time. Um, you probably have heard of these mythic players that just create... A ton of alts and they just never finish one because I just wanted to see how everything looks how everything is druids had to do a special quest at level 10 to get a bear form oh that was so amazing shamans had to travel the world to get their totems their respective totems that was insane it was so cool warriors and if you remember this warriors oh damn it man you had to go to Frey Island to get your uh, berserker stance if I remember correctly and you had to duel guys there, and um, I was a noob back then, of course, but I don't remember it being uh, being too easy to do that. So it was really cool, really cool. And uh, there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of things there. Uh, there were a lot of things in uh, in the original uh, game. I, of course, it was all it was all vanilla. It was all private servers. Everything was buggy. Uh, there was like no such thing as line of sight. And the pathing for uh, for the units wasn't properly scripted. Like the units would fly into terrain, they would just like their hitbox 
would walk into a straight line towards your hitbox. And if that took them through terrain, they went through terrain. It was really awkward. And there was no such thing as line of sight, so... Um, if you would go into a dungeon, I remember this, uh, we were doing, um, Scarlet Monastery, the, the original Scarlet Monastery, if you remember that. I think it was the library or the armory, I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> and as soon as you got into the dungeon, because it was so buggy, the mobs, the, all of the mobs in the dungeon would start to aggro you through the walls. Like the way, uh, the second boss in Tolda Gore does now, I don't know if they fixed that. They would just walk through the walls, all of them, and come like 20 elites or something like that and kill all of us, right? So the only way we could essentially do the dungeon and get loot from the boss was for us to abuse another bug, which was on the private servers at the time. Um, when you died, I don't, I'm not sure if this was even something on the retail servers and they patched it afterwards, but if you died in a dungeon, uh, your ghost would spawn on your corpse, not outside of the dungeon. So uh, what happened was you died, you released, and your ghost was like right there on your corpse. So what we used to do was we used to walk uh, a couple of yards ahead of our corpse, like as far as the uh, uh, the the release, uh, like when you know when you die and you want to recover your corpse, you don't have to like go on the exact same spot where your corpse died. There's like a range around you where you can accept the resurrection and uh, you know go uh, go back to uh to playing right so what we do is we would we would corpse leapfrog or something like that we would die we would walk a couple of yards in front and we would die again because the mobs will always aggro us back and kept kept doing this until we reached the boss and after a couple of tries we realized that all of our gear was getting destroyed so we were doing this naked when once we mastered the art of abusing two bugs and that's how we killed bosses and not to mention that private servers at the time uh, they didn't have scripted encounters everything was tank and spank there is no such thing as mechanics for private servers that was I, I always regret playing on private servers and not being able to play on Blizzard and experience an actual fight like it was at the time everything was tank and spank there was like this mage boss where you would just go and he would just hit you in the face with a staff for like 10 15 minutes or whatever however long it took for us to kill it at a time it was crazy it was so bad we knew it but like there was nothing that we could do that's that's how it was at the time that's how we played wow and it and it was and it kept doing this it was the this tank and spank stuff went all the way through tbc when tbc went out so that's how we played that's how i remember my first uh black temple raid and um uh, People were doing this uh, on, on retail as well because of how Thread worked at the time where the tank would have to, uh, I think it was for the earlier bosses anyway, the tank would have to aggro the boss with a couple of uh, Sunder armors because only t warriors were tanks at the time. And uh, after a couple of moments then the DPS would start to do their shit, right? But on a private server where everything was tank and spank and threats didn't really, additional threat didn't work. Um, what we had to do is we had to wait for our tank to take the boss to 95% HP. Can you imagine that? A tank in vanilla dealing enough damage to take 5% of... Uh, I'm gonna heal you, but I'm out of mana. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, you died. I cannot raise you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just just release. I think I think you're, you're gonna be fine if you release. Oh, god damn it. Just hit it with the stuff. And uh that that's that's how dungeons and raids were run at this private service at the time. Of course, um that was 14 years ago. Uh things change. Even private servers, vanilla servers now are obviously a lot better off. Can I hit him now? Can I kill him? There we go. And uh yeah, that's that's how it was and I remember like the coolest memories. <laughs> You're in the village. <laughs> Those vanilla walk distance. Yep, there were no closed graveyards. <laughs> Look at that. So if you died, it took you like five minutes to get back to the corpse. There's no such thing as 
easy corpse runs. Nah, nah. People, like, remember when uh, JLM Brack said that you think you want vanilla, but you actually don't? A lot of people don't remember all of these, of these details, right? You had to walk for like five to ten minutes to get your corpse back, and this usually happened once or twice per quest, especially if you played Warrior, which is statistically one of the worst classes to level in vanilla. And uh, yeah, well, it was, I did play a lot on the private servers. It was, it was a lot of fun at the time, but I remember fondly, one thing that did work was PvP. I was so into PvP at the time, world PvP, of course, because it was vanilla. Um, I, I thought that all this PV raiding things were so hard to do because the servers that, that I used to play on were very low populated. Like initially when I started to play, I think on my faction, I think I was playing Alliance, there were like 20 total people in the game on Alliance side and around 10 to Horde or something like that. It was crazy. It was crazy to play on private servers. I, I envy you guys that used to play on retail. I wish I could have played with you at the time. Totally different experience. So PvE was out of the question. There's no such thing that like people could PvE. There's not enough people to PvE with except do, doing five mans. So PvP was the only thing left, right? And because the servers were so low populated, the only realistic place where you could do world PvP were in the highest dense zones, which were Stranglethorn Vale at the time. Stranglethorn Vale, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, had the largest level range in the game at the time. I think it was 28, 29, all the way to like 40, 45 or something like that. It was insane levels. You had a, a gazillion quests, a gazillion quests. And I used to play Alliance a lot at the time, and I had a Dwarf Hunter, I remember that. I used to be a Dwarf Hunter. And Hunter in vanilla, of course it was OP for PvE. And uh, did you get? Okay, she got it. Uh, but I felt it was so cool, the original Hunter, you had tracking, you can track stuff, you could track players, you can track uh, stealth guys. Um, you can reveal stealth, you had traps. Uh, it was amazing, so much versatility, it felt so cool to abuse all of these mechanics. And uh, that's that's how I used to PvP, I think I was running Beastmaster at the time. And Intimidation, which is the stun, I think it was only, uh, it was a Beastmaster talent at the time, I'm not sure if it's general now. But that's that's how it was, uh, that's how it was in vanilla. And uh, I would sick the pets on... Uh, Onto enemies, I was like sitting around trees super far away. Wow, this guy's resisting twice already. And I was just sitting back and waiting for them to, do, to deal with the pets. And whenever they started hitting the pets, I would start hitting them back with range attacks. And whenever they were uh, trying to get to me, I, were, I was putting like traps. I was starting with the pets. Um, I, I think I, I oh, sometimes I was also playing Night Elf Hunters. I was using Shadow Meld. And uh, it was it was really cool. It was really really nice times. And that's that's how I I remember fondly world PvP back when I used to play uh, classic WoW. And I love to world PvP. I love to play hunter in world PvP. The range advantage. Like people were so bad at the time. I was so bad at the time. People were figuring out the game. Nobody knew their class. Nobody knew what ranges. The first time that I encountered good people, I think I was dueling a frost mage. And uh, the guy was uh, doing uh, Nova, uh, Frost Nova. And if you remember back then, if you played range hunter, you had a minimum range um, of eight yards, I think. And if a target was closer uh, to you than eight yards, you couldn't fire your range attacks anymore because it was way too close. And uh, if you if the target was like something like this, like five yards away from you. You couldn't melee them because they were too far, and you couldn't range attack them because they were too close. And I remember playing uh, against this uh, this frost mage that used to do this, like frozen no frost nova, and just cast frost bolts within that dead zone. It was insane. I just re that's what the f I think this is the first thing that I remember uh, encountering a good person. Like wow, this guy knows what he's doing. He knows I have a minimum range and a maximum range. It was really cool, and I, I liked PvP at the time. It felt like. Even though the game was was newer, it was um, people were still uh, discovering shit. There were a lot of mechanics that you can abuse, but I felt like because of that you could get creative. You didn't have as many restrictions in PvP as you do now. 
you could have you could do crazy stuff with items and scrolls and, and potions and stuff like that you can still do most of them now as well but it's it's not the same it's not like like it was at the time and this is probably part of what constitutes classic nostalgia that a lot of a lot of us uh, old boys feel for uh, for their game right and uh, this, these were my early vanilla days, and um, I did ca I didn't end up capping a character, and it was my Shaman. The the character that I actually wanted to level the most with in PvP was Shaman because I was watching, if you remember, the old Unbreakable Enhancement Shaman Wind Fury crits video. Man, I used to watch at PvP videos all the time, and when I saw that guy do like three Wind Fury crits of 1.4k damage each, I even remember the numbers, man. I've watched that dozens of times. Are you kidding me? It was insane. It was like, I want to be like that, right? I want to play PvP. I want to proc uh, Wind Fury and hit Storm Strikes and one-shot people. That was so cool. But, little did I know, um, you, I couldn't do that on a private server because it was bugged. Um, all you shamans today, you might not know, but at the time, you couldn't do a wield, of course. Um, and the two-handed weapon uh, skill, it was nothing that you could learn from a trainer. It was a talent that you had to get otherwise you were you were stuck with a, a one-hander and a shield for uh, for the early game i think it was until level 20 if i remember correctly you had to play enhancement with a one-hander and a shield i'm not i don't know if you could use staves i don't think so so <clears throat> the bug that was at this uh, on the server at the time is that the talent didn't work you, you would put a point into it but nothing would happen you wouldn't actually get the skill so i couldn't fulfill my dream of Wind Fury crits. Oh, and Wind Fury didn't even work. So welcome to bugs of private servers. Sweep for me, all you uh, special snowflakes. So I was stuck because uh, I was very stubborn. I was stuck playing my uh, my enhancement shaman with a shield and a one hander. I was using like everything from from my shocks, from my rock biter, from my uh, um, totems and stuff. I was using everything in my arsenal to PvP. And I remember I had a friend that used to play a hunter and uh he tamed one of the dogs in the scarlet monastery right one of the elite dogs and another bug that was running at the time was when you tamed a, a pet <clears throat> it didn't when when uh, the taming was successful it didn't receive like a template of stats like i think it, they should to match uh to match you as a hunter's pet they would retain their uh, their world stats right so if you would tame an elite beast it would retain its elite status so as you can imagine nobody was able to kill elites at the time except other hunters with pets i'm not sure if i have this quest though a humble task picture two. Oh no i don't think i have this but that's fine um so of course he got that uh, he got that dog and the pet had like twice our HP and twice our damage or stuff like that. He would just put when he whenever he dueled people, he would just put the pet on the people and they would uh, obviously lose the duels. That's uh, that's how people played private service at the time. And I remember like I was reaching a cap. I was like level 58, I think. He was already capped. I was in Silithus, right? We were doing some quests, and then I said, "Okay, man, let's 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 do a duel, right?" Because at the time, you could PvP even if you were not both the same level. The difference between like uh, a non-capped character and a capped character wasn't as big as today. Even though with Battle for Azeroth, they kind of made it so you could PvP uh, after one uh, one uh, ten, one eleven, but it's uh, it's not like it was at uh, at the time, right? You remember those rogue videos where they were fighting like five to ten uh, higher level players and they were killing them? That's how PvP was at the time. So I dueled the guy, right? And I actually won. It was insane. It was like a 20 minute duel or some shit like that. Uh, I kept, uh, I had a one hander and a shield, of course. I, ha I was specced into shields and mana and stuff. And um, I, killed, I killed his pets because there was no chance for me to kill him while the pet was on me. The pet would just kill me before anything happened so uh, I killed this pet and I killed him and I remember he was so salty uh, that uh, he didn't duel me or or spoke to me um, for a long time after that because uh, he was the so-called unde undefeated private pleb uh, abusing bugs at the time so 
And then I end up, ended up capping my uh, my character, and even if it was a private server, man, I gotta tell you, leveling in vanilla is is painful. Oh, painful. And I was also into the Blizz-like experience, and uh, this is a term that you don't really find on retail. Blizz-like is basically a trait that certain private servers have to reflect uh, their um, their accuracy to the real uh, experience of, uh, of official servers like because you could have servers where uh, it ga they gave you um, additional experience more than uh, the normal I think this server too I think the amount of experience that, are, that, that I'm getting here is a little bit higher than what it's supposed to be I think I'm getting level 4 a little bit too uh, too quickly but Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. So I was playing on these these low uh, low experience game servers, like as close to the to the official experience as possible. So it took me like a couple of months, or probably half a year, to uh, to cap my first character. And that's how it was at the time, and uh, it was cool. It was very very satisfying. But I think it was close to uh, to TBC's release, or I think uh, the Burning Crusade actually. I think it actually released. By the time, uh... oh shit! I cannot, I cannot see that. By the time I capped, right? So I just remember that I capped. I had a couple of friends. I went into Molten Core with three people because, of course, the raid was bugged. There were like no mobs there, and I just saw a couple of the bosses. We didn't kill anything, obviously, because uh, private server bugs. Uh, travel to Seer Great Totem who lives directly south of Camp Narashi. Oh, okay there. And that's that's pretty much as as much as, as I can remember uh, from my first vanilla servers. It was um, it was a time of a lot of bugs, a lot of things not going properly. So not everything worked. And then I um, I went into the TBC, and that's when I started playing well a little bit more seriously. Um, I played progression. I had uh, things were working better at the time. There weren't as many bugs. Uh, the the raids were still tank and spank, but they were hard for us because even though uh, the fights weren't scripted, most of our uh, class abilities weren't working properly anyway. So we didn't essentially have our full arsenal of kits and stuff. So we did that, and that's that's my uh, my WoW experience. I used to play a lot on TBC for years and years. Like Wrath of the Lich King came out. Uh, but I didn't want to play a private server with uh, with Wrath because I knew there was bugs There were always bugs on new servers with new expansions before they got patched out It took months and months for bugs to be patched out And uh, I knew that if I would go into the into a Wrath server, I would just encounter a lot of bugs And I did eventually end up uh, going on a Wrath of the Lich King server Okay, I think I need to go back there I think I actually have the quest with uh, the Bristleback Boars, by the way. The ones that I helped you kill. I just have the quest now if you want to come and help. I'm just going to walk there. And um, I remember, of course, rolling a Death Knight because that was all the craze back then. And uh, the story, man. The starting story for the Death Knight was insane. I enjoyed that a lot. It's, I, I mean, it's arguably still one of the best starting zones for any playable class in the game. Demon Hunters are cool, but they're not Death Knight cool. And uh, no other class has that, that much lore, that much feel into it, because you come from the Warcraft 3 timeline with Arthas and the Lich King, so you kind of feel everything. So it's really cool, but of course there was another bug where you couldn't finish the... Uh, the last bit of the quest when you assault Light Light's Hope Chapel with Darien, so you couldn't do that. Uh, so of course I never actually got to see the end of the story. Of course you could skip that and actually play your your DK, which I did, but I never actually got to to make the fight to uh, to do the final step. So I had to watch the fight on YouTube to see how it actually goes. And I was super jealous. I was like, man, I so want to play the official servers, like all of this cool story, all of these cool things. I don't get to do because I'm playing on a shitty private server, right? And um, I played a little bit in the in Northrend, the zones were cool, the music was amazing, of course, as I probably already know, but I stopped because I had, didn't have any friends that were still playing WoW at the time, everybody was playing the official uh, Blizzard servers, right? So I stopped playing WoW. 
I stopped playing well for a long time. I kept in touch with my friends that were playing, like I knew like the story of, uh, of Kata, I knew the story of uh, Mist of Pandaria, and I really wanted to play Mist. Although um, I did have the initial uh, preconception that everybody has like, uh, oh pandas, what are pandas doing here? This is so silly. Uh, why are we playing pandas, right? But in hindsight, I think that would have been probably the expansions I would have enjoyed most. I like the Asian theme, the uh, uh, the monk uh, martial arts theme, the, the balance and the peace of nature. I like that stuff. But of course, I didn't get out, get to play it. But then, um, I've, of course, there was the BlizzCon, and I, oh, I don't remember which year it was, when they announced Warlords of Draenor, of course, with Mets in there. And I was like, oh, they're going back to the roots. It's the time travel thing where I get to fight Grom, Hellscream, and all of the orc leaders that I used to play with in Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3. It felt so cool. And even the ones in the TBC, right? If you remember, Kargath Bladefist was, was a boss, I think, in one of the five-man dungeons in Hellfire. So, uh, going back in time to actually fight those, it felt amazing. It's like, okay, I'm going to play on official servers this time. For this expansion, I'm buying the game. Because I, I was hyped, it was like nostalgia, it was like the closest I would get to like classic original uh, Warcraft stories. And um, I didn't end up buying the game, a friend of mine bought it actually for me. Uh, he knew I wanted to, uh, to play. And I started playing on official servers, it was amazing, right? Of course, um, when, you, uh, when you buy the game you get a boost, I think it was for level 90 at the time, the boost that it was. I got a boost, I met a character, I played the story in the new zones, it felt amazing, right? Uh, going from buggy private servers with like an unscripted mechanics and encounters to that, it felt amazing. It felt like I was finally watching a colored TV, right, from the old silent movies. And I remember like the first time that I actually felt that I was playing official servers and I actually felt like I was playing World of Warcraft. I was leveling uh, an alt because um, I couldn't really get into the endgame content because I, I missed like 10 years or 8 years of World of Warcraft, right? So I leveled, I saw the dungeons and I ended up in one of the Northern dungeons. Uh, I, I, I don't remember which one it was, the one with uh, Anubarak at the end, right? As the last boss, one of the five mans. And we get to Anubarak, and one of the mechanics, one of the things that Anubarak does, he goes underground, then he starts spiking everything around. It was like, wow, wow, this is so cool. He actually has mechanics. He actually feels like uh, like a character with a, with a mindset and a strategy and a plan and stuff like that. It was like so amazing for me. And that's, that's when I knew, okay, man, I'm never going to go back to private servers. I'm never going to go back to not playing original, uh, original WoW, which is the only WoW that people should play. And I got hooked ever since. I got hooked ever since on Worlds of Draenor, and I'm, 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 I will always regret not playing, um, TBC, Wrath, uh, Mr. Pandaria. I mean, Kata is okay. I, I don't really regret not playing Cataclysm. Um, because I've, I've done the Deathwing uh, fight, it's mech, I mean, we could probably all agree on that. Uh, the only, the only fight that I actually liked in the expansion was the Cho'Gal one, because it has a lot of lore into it. Play with Cho'Gal in Warcraft 2. And, um, yeah, that's how, that's why I played in Wads. I, uh, leveled a lot of characters, I saw how everything is, I, I raided for the first time, I said, okay, I'm gonna raid this time, because I actually can, I have friends to play with. I can raid and see the bosses and kill the dragons and all of that cool lore. Let's let's go here actually. Let's kill that. And uh, it was it was amazing. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I was a shit player at the time. Uh, I thought I knew how to play. Going to like I'm gonna show these blizzard blizzard snowflakes how it is to play with like half of your skills, encounter bugged mechanics and still adapt. But I was I was of course a big a big fat noob. And uh, that's how I got into into actual WoW. And of course, then I started playing Legion, and Legion was one of the most amazing expansions ever. We can probably all agree on that. The amount of lore, class fantasy, everything in it, it was amazing. It was a really, really well done expansion. And uh, yeah, and now uh, 
now we're here. Now we are playing Battle for Azeroth, and actually I'm not playing Battle for Azeroth, as you can tell. It's a downtime of the expansion, it's not the best time for WoW, unfortunately. And I'm mainly making this video so you can understand who I am, how, what's the background, where, where, where do I come from as a WoW player, right? I I might not have all of the uh, the nostalgia that everybody has built up all of the years. Um, I'm looking at WoW with different eyes because I come from a background of playing a bugged version of WoW, an unfinished version of WoW. And anything that Battle for Azeroth so far introduced into the game is nothing compared to what I used to play when I started playing WoW. So I'm a little bit biased when I judge uh, Battle for Azeroth and WoW in general because it's still pretty for me. It still works. The amount of hotfixes and the responsiveness from Blizzard is amazing. Of course, it's not ideal. We're not getting going to get into that there and talk about how Blizzard is communicating with us and how they're fixing the Azerite problem. But it's I'm always going to be a bit more biased when I judge the game as opposed to you guys who've probably played for at least the last three or four expansions. But it's still uh, it's still a take on on how WoW is. It's still an impression of somebody that's paying for the game that's playing the game so that's 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 uh, that's my take on it so i'm glad you guys stuck around all this time for all this rambling it's a story time kind of video i mean if you guys like it we can do more of this uh there's a lot more stories that we can tell me and marcelin of course he probably has his own stories to tell uh, more stuff that you probably don't know. If you like these kinds of stuff, just leave a comment in the video. Maybe tell us how you started. Did you play on private servers? Are you excited for the classic, uh, classic world that's gonna, uh, that's gonna come shortly after BlizzCon, we assume? I'm definitely gonna try it a little bit for nostalgia's sake. And uh, depending on how Battle for Azeroth evolves and how quickly patch 8.1 comes out, I might actually look into doing a lot, a lot of content for Vanilla. Although I played a buggy version of Vanilla, I kinda know pretty much all the quests in the game. I kind of know all the, the leveling routes and stuff like that. Maybe not to perfection, but you know, I have thousands and thousands of hours into vanilla and TBC WoW. So, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.